how does um, Away3D work? How does it think? Well, the the basic is you, you've got a viewport. Uh, your viewport's a rectangular window allowing you to look into the 3D space, which is called a scene. Um, and the scene is um, very much like a 3D version of the display list. Um, and Away 3D have gone um, have gone really out of their way to try and make uh, using 3D in Flash as much like using the display list as possible. So, for instance. Um, every uh, instead of a, a, a display object container, um, you've got uh, an object container 3D, um, and they all have transformation matrices attached to them, which just have 3D coordinates. Um, so you, you know you're going to find yourself at home very very quickly using away 3D. Uh, the camera is oh, it's just a bunch of maths really that. Um, that determines how the objects uh, in the scene, or <coughs> or the scene graph, is what they call the the equivalent of the display list, uh, is rendered. Um, the camera actually lives, um, as far as the way 3D is concerned, the camera lives within the scene itself. Uh, you give it um, a point just like any other 3D object. You can swing it around, point it. You can point it at objects. Uh, you can um, you can also put different lenses onto it. Uh, and this is part of the part of the what I love about working with Away 3D. Uh, you can have orthogonal lenses if you if you're going for that Farmville look of no perspective. Um, so you've got a 3D world that uh, the, 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 there's no kind of normal perspective. It's just a grid system. Uh, you just pop an orthogonal lens onto your camera. It's just a class. You instantiate it, um, and you go uh, camera dot lens equals new orthogonal lens, there you go, bang. Um, but you normally don't have to think about these details, though they're all there available for you, but um, most uh, classes in a way 3D come with a whole bunch of defaults already there, so they just work, and if they don't do what you want, then you can start messing around. Uh, that makes it really, really quick to get up and running with it. Um, so, uh, object 3D. I suppose is is probably the closest equivalent to a sprite. It uh, contains um, it contains a mesh, which is a bunch of points in 3D space, and a uh, and a material um, which wraps around it. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, also, lights um, lights aren't actually necessary, but you don't really get very far with them um, if you don't use them. So they're uh, <laughs> they're kind of important. Uh, without lights, you, what you're doing is going to look pretty awful, really. Uh, so what can we display? Well, there's uh, 15 primitives. Um, so you can just create objects, toruses, cubes, spheres. Um, it, it sounds really basic, but as soon as you start adding materials, you can really get somewhere very, very fast. Uh, I've found quite a lot of primitives. Um, to, to, which I dismissed early on. I find myself using them quite a lot. It can also import 3D models. Um, the, it'll uh, support most of them. Actually, I believe that's not true. I'm just going to delete that. I don't think it does support Collada. There was a lot of um, discussion about this. Collada is uh, the kind of open source uh, format for 3D models. but. Uh, it's extremely large, so it's not really suitable for being downloaded over the web, and uh, and the team don't like it. They're actually uh, developing their own format called AWD2, and they're trying to push that to become an industry standard. Um, it's much better suited to uh, to being delivered over the web. Uh, it can contain an, an awful lot of information, animations, and, and everything. 3D models uh, are actually extremely complex files. They contain meshes, uh, they contain objects, sub-meshes, all sorts of geometries that you can contain, can contain multiple materials, they can contain lights, they can contain a vast amount of things, and animations as well. Uh, ob obj files are static, they're really simple, they're, they're just like meshes, whereas 3DS files um, contain, and they're, they're not just files, they're, they're entire folders full of stuff which tells you where everything is. Um, 
And a way through is a, a, a very nice job of importing all of these things. It's got something called an asset library, um, which is uh, it, it's, a, it's a singleton. Um, you can instantiate it, pass it around, use it that way, or you can just use static methods, which is what I do because it's just easier. Um, so you can just say, right, um, load this file, parse it, prepare it, and then give it to me. Tell me when it's ready, and you can pull out various uh, you can pull out various um, parts of it. So you could, for instance, tell it to load a 3ds file and an object file, and then you can then just ask the asset library to return all meshes that have been loaded from within the, the 3ds file or all materials um, object files can contain materials and it will just give you a list of all the available materials so that's found, has had a lot of work put into it but it does make working with uh, with pre-built models much much more easy um, you've got prefab 3d as well which is great for importing and you can export from prefab 3d into awd which is probably uh, that the, that what you should be working with. I, I tend to stick with 3ds files exported from Blender. Um, you can also generate meshes programmatically. Extrusions is, is the uh, is the classic one um, where you can extrude uh, uh, you can extrude a vector uh, as a kind of cylinder in a, in a lathe style, or you can extrude vertically. Um, there's an awful lot of ways you can you can actually generate your own meshes programmatically if, if you're that much of a masochist um, and there's an awful lot of uh, there's an awful lot of scope for doing very creative stuff in there but you're going to need a bit of time to do that I haven't I haven't really looked into that yet 